the most common feeling that every animal every human feels is love it is that quality of finding good in others of feeling the sense of oneness that draws one person to another the love creates such a force that is so automatic and so self driving that it does not need any external force to operate hence it can adjust a man from within in a very simple manner no matter how many moral education administrative reforms we create in the society it is quite hard to make changes happen in the intellect in the moral nature of human mind because our mind has such complex identities such complex identifications that it tends to bind itself with anything that it involves with we have seen many seers and many masters of the ancient past they have mentioned this very clearly that human beings and many other animals they are slave to their own instincts now the most basic instinct in all of us is the instinct to exist we all want to exist we all want to live we all want to grow and we don't want to die this basis this basic essence of life is to want to exist to live and grow and for that we need certain drives that would drive us towards many things in the world for example we needed greed the greed to grow we needed lust the lust to multiply the human civilization and so on hence several complexities developed in that original primordial love that we were born with and these complexities created passions passions are some drives in our system that makes us do things that makes us desire things and when we desire something and that is fulfilled it brings happiness whereas when we desire something and it is not fulfilled it brings sadness all the sadness all the grief and sorrow in the world we can find their root in some kind of unfulfilled desire and the root of any unfulfilled desire we can trace that back to any complex or any passion now these passions are complexes were supposed to help us they were supposed to be the tools of our mind that we were supposed to direct and use in our own existential benefit that is for our own life and growth because for every animal for every plant and for every human beings we knew that to live we need a social support to live we need food to eat for food we need some kind of plant so the, the agriculture came in without the plant living we cannot grow we cannot live in a similar fashion in every sector of the ecology and environment we can see there is a mutual understanding there is a mutual dependence and this mutual dependence begets existential growth but when passions strike in and we lose the control of those passions they become like uncontrolled desires for example fire is useful we can use it for many a great things but the uncontrolled fire is a disaster it can create inferno 
all over the world and kill many people. So we need something and it is a very high time so that we can take charge of our own passions. We can drive them towards our own becoming. Now, how would we do that? Often uh, by many kind of reforms, we tend to suppress them. We tend to repress them and force them to change. But psychology says, the ancients also say that such kind of suppression brings undesirable change. What happens is our mind, they becomes some kind of different passions. For example, when lust is suppressed, it looks like that the feeling of lust is gone, but often that lust is transmuted to anger. This kind, in this way, the complex is transmuted from one form to another and it is actually never solved. Now the good way to transmute the complexes into good results is through that initial thing that we were given and born with. And that thing is love. If we can direct our love in such a source, in such a source of knowledge, which <coughs> who is the embodiment of those faculties who can control the passions themselves, then we can opt those qualities within us. Love is such a drive that makes us change without any force. For example, I love to play. I don't like to read, suppose. Then that playing thing is natural for me. No one need to force me. But to read, to study, my mother have to force me. So love is an automatic force. <coughs> it has a certain pull in it. When, due to the evolution, due to the evolution of mankind, in the history of the humankind, it is seen that certain people have come who have served humanity in the most advanced way possible. And that is through love and name, through service and everything existential. These kind of people are called perfect living ideals. In such personalities, the consciousness that is so latent in us, the source of knowledge that lies like a seed inside our being, is unfurled like an overgrown tree in their hearts. They seem to be the source of so much knowledge and so much experience. People tend to worship these people like the incarnates of God. But they say that they are nothing more than human beings. And they are the example of how great a human being can become. Such people are called ideal, prophet, God incarnate, nobi, purushottam and what not, avatar. And due to their attractive personality, loving service, and all-round loving attitude, unconditional loving attitude, people are drawn to him. And since they are drawn by love, they see an intense amount of transmutation of their personality. They develop certain qualities that they have never thought could possible. This kind of love changes people. So the biggest asset that one can have in life is the love towards the ideal, the love and regard, the untottering attachment towards the ideal is the biggest asset that one can get. This continuous intense flow of love towards the ideal is called devotion. This devotion lets us do many works, many kind of actions that we seemed, that we thought were impossible. And through that work, through those actions, we beget knowledge. 
So this way we turn into a miniature of such personalities and miniature forms of ideals in the society. So among all revolutions, this kind of revolution, this kind of social reformation is very useful and all time necessary in our society. A unitary rise in consciousness is good, but a single man alone cannot do much good. He must, he must expand his knowledge and the same thing is seen. If a poet, if a philosopher is enlightened, he enlightens other people. That's why it's called, he's called an enlightened personality. The nature of light is such that light itself is invisible. But when light falls on other things, those things become visible. The same is with our knowledge, our human nature, that when we work for others, we rise, we raise the social consciousness of, of everything around. Our own consciousness gets identified. Without shadow, without light, there is no shadow. Without right, there is no left. Similarly, without others, there is no I. This environment conscious nature is also called Dharma. Dharma means those activities, those personalities, those works, deeds, thoughts that helps in upholding our existence and others' existence. That thing is called Dharma. And in the ideal, in an ideal personality or a perfect living master, those kind of personalities, those qualities of dharma are manifested. Just like we learn about kindness from a kind person. The kindness is already latent in us, but we cannot fathom the understanding of kindness without a kind person. Similarly, the laws of existential life and growth, the laws of equanimous love for everyone is very hard without an embodiment of love. The motherly love that is so infinite and latent in a girl, in a woman, does not seem to manifest till she gets a child in her arms. When she gets the child in her arms, she plays with, with, it, with it and experiences the joy of motherhood. Then she unravels the treasury of love that was latent in her. Similarly, no matter in the sky or what, wherever we find God or reality, ultimate reality, unless we find a living ideal, a person who walked on this planet Earth, a perfect living master with the qualities of an ideal, with the qualities of an avatar, with the qualities of that is that gives rise to so many religions and scientific psychophysical revolutions in the world without them we cannot unfathom the infinite potential that is already within us so it's high time we must seek we must seek into the depths of human consciousness we must seek into such personalities we must not be ignorant we must not be foolishly egoistic to let not con be controlled by others. No matter how smart we are, we need some kind of education, isn't it? We need some kind of education, some kind of book, some kind of fo follower or some kind of teacher to learn any subject. But why are we so adamant to not learn about human consciousness and how to control our mind and life? from a living teacher. We need that. So we need to find such personalities. We know we are smart, but the smartness needs a reformation. The smartness, need, the smartness needs an impulse. This impulse or thakkar is given by such a personality who is revered as Thakur. So let us seek, let us find such a personality and adjust ourselves by binding 
with him with the bond of love thank you vande purushottam